What's up guys, back at it again with another video and today we're going to pull apart this uh, four port Renesis. Um, I obtained this Renesis engine by a friend who basically is going to do a 2JZ swap on his RX-8 but he says this engine was completely dead and I mean it's a four port auto. It's not crazy but yeah you can tell it's the four port because let's see come on camera focus. Focus. There you go. You can tell it's a four port because right here, this top port is not milled out like the six ports would be, as well as it doesn't have the actual big circle to mount up to. So it's just got one, two, three, and four over there. And then on top of that, of it being a four port, it is also automatic. You can tell it's automatic because it's got that rear counterweight right there. And yeah, so we're going to pull this thing apart. Um, shout out to the actual owner, that guy gave it to me, because he helped me both get the flywheel nut off, which was easy. And then he also helped me get the front stack bolt, the little E-shaft one right there. The, that one. Um, normally that's torqued down to, I think, like 90 foot-pounds of, uh, of torque. But it took us, it defeated an air impact, it defeated an electric impact. And then we ended up having to use a breaker bar strapping the engine to a minivan wheel, which I'll put the video up real quick. But yeah, that's uh, that's what we had to do. But as for how alive this engine was, he said that the front rotor died. Um, this is not a reman engine either, which is surprising. But uh, yeah, so this to the rear rotor he says was still good, and then the front one was dying. It was flooding, and he tried to replace the alternator and the starters and stuff to try to see if he can get it to keep starting, but wouldn't hot start, kept flooding. He says eventually he started shooting fire out the exhaust and all that. So, yeah, pretty sure that's dead. But we can also confirm that with a trusty 19 millimeter. Yeah, and you just turn it, turn it the direction the engine, uh, the engine turns this whoa <laughs> still full of uh, water when I was uh, power washing it apparently but yeah, you can hear that rear that rear rotor over here yeah if you can see here this rear rotor Here we go. Yeah, if you can hear the rear rotor, this is the compression on it. Given it is full of water, it is uh, having a hard time. So, yeah, it is uh, dead. But we're going to take this apart and see how much, and by we, I mean me and my, uh, my, my girlfriend, my wife, my significant other, we're going to tear this thing apart and uh, see what's good on the inside. Alright, oil pan is off now. I don't see anywhere so far underneath. But, not, not counting anything because I doubt there would really be anything in the oil. The oil was kind of gray, which probably means there was gasoline mixed in it. But, I am hoping to find internals that look like this, with no chrome flaking and completely reusable. All right, we're uh, just about to do the fun part and take apart all the uh, rear bolts off. But so far, I got the front cover off, which kind of like how all the water pump and stuff is all together on the RX-8 engines. And oil pan, you know, was annoying. I already saw that part. And then, because this is an automatic engine, there is a trick um, on the rear. There is a rear auto counterweight, which looks like this. That one right there. Yeah, the automatic engine has the counterweight, which uh, Racing Beat sells a special puller for like 40 bucks. Um, if you're, you know, professional, probably would want to be using that. But since for me, um, this engine, if it was ever, ever used again, it would be manual. So um, I don't care about destroying that or not. So what I did is I took this little cap, which goes over the over the flywheel nut. I took that, 
the two bolts right there and then I basically just oh and then I think I already put it away but oh, there it is yeah so on the counterweight I re bolted this on but I only took it like two turns like that then put the other piece on top of there and then when I did that then I just bolted up those two bolts into the back of the spacer into the counterweight and it popped off after maybe kind of like two or three minutes of just kind of tightening it down which wasn't too bad but yeah that popped that off that's a little little trick I figured out to get that off in case anyone decides to take apart an automatic um, but yeah I mean I don't see I don't see much wear and stuff yet um, the rub around this like seal is actually kind of tarnished and kind of worn out on the edge but not too bad I didn't realize how much sealant they used on um, the Renesis engine <laughs> I don't know if that's a normal thing or if that's like a rebuild flaw or something like that but yeah it's quite a quite a bit of stuff on there it was leaking out the sides but yeah oh going back in focus sorry I'm using that manual lens again but yeah it's so how does it feel to be tearing apart a rotor engine? I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> well, this is the learning experience, the rite of passage, right? I guess. Plus it's kind of fun. It's it's very... Uh, Jesus Christ. I guess relaxing. <laughs> Getting covered <laughs> in oil, finding out the oil engine still has tons more oil in it, like a whole nother quart. Cracking your knuckles over metal and pissing yourself off. <laughs> uh, can't really see it, but yeah, I just smacked my knuckles off the two. <laughs> and then we're oddly using a GSL SE stock wheel to support this because you can see the bend in there. They're a collector's item now. What does your wife do three weeks postpartum? <laughs> no heavy lifting. No, don't use your belly muscles. You might tear them three weeks after giving birth to a baby. <laughs> Take it apart a rotor engine. <laughs> I feel like it's fine. It's all right. All right, well, upon tearing this apart, there's actually very little, like, step wear on that iron, which is good. That bearing. Yeah, that bearing. Let's see if I can focus on that. I'm kind of shaky. Yeah, the bearing right there, there's a lot of copper sticking out, so that is trash. But the stationary gear could be safe because the bearing could get pulled out. Now we have the rotor here, which we have. It looks like seal, seal, and seal. Corner seal just fell out already, but um, yeah, I, I mean, look at there's a lot of carbon on there, a lot of carbon that needs more, more burnouts, more redlining, more fun. But uh, I don't really see too much wear yet on the the housing itself. So this housing might be savable, might be good. Um, and then we'll check out the iron underneath, but the other, the, the bad one is the other, other rotor, the rear, well, the front rotor. But yeah, so far so good. E shaft might be toast. Yeah. There you go, Sydney. First rotor torn apart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as Sydney was taken apart, we'll get the apex seals out of the rotor. One, they are very, very, very used Apex seals compared to the other ones, which I'll do a comparison later. Compared to the other one, they're they're uh, pretty worn out. But yeah, right here we have uh, looks like broken springs, broken Apex seal springs, which probably caused to a uh, very bad uh, compression issues. All right, so as we pulled out the uh, the back half, there is a distinct groove in the middle plate like hey that that's so bad and it goes around and all over the place yeah that's that's pretty bad 
But then when we actually looked at the rotor, there's a big gouge right there. There's a chunk taken out right there. The inside you can see the you can see the grooves as well. And then on this we've been able to see look what's right there. That's an apex hill. That's a blown apex hill. <laughs> Which is cool. It's the first uh, engine I've taken apart with a blown engine. Because uh, all the other cars we have work. <laughs> that's cool. This is why you don't buy an RX-8. <laughs> We're finding an R3 that's decent condition. <laughs>